We have new information this morning from the investigation that found Alex Rodriguez used performance enhancing drugs. The New York Yankees slugger is now suing Major League Baseball and the Players Union over his one year suspension. Jim Axelrod is here. Jim, good morning. Well, good morning, Charlie. Rodriguez was spotted in Houston Monday while his lawyers filed that appeal in federal court here in Manhattan. They're challenging the 162 game suspension handed down by the league's independent arbitrator, Frederick Horowitz. Attorneys for Rodriguez claim the arbitrator's ruling should be overturned because Horowitz was biased, ruling in favor of Major League Baseball to preserve his own job. The lawsuit alleges Horowitz exhibited a manifest disregard for law, acted with evident partiality, and refused to entertain evidence pertinent to the outcome. The suit also claims the Players Union, which represented Rodriguez in the arbitration hearing, completely abdicated its responsibility to protect his rights. We have circumstances regarding a lack of due process, a lack of fundamental fairness, um, undue influence on the arbitrator, and, and most importantly, um, a punishment that was, was handed out that still is in excess of anything that you could find in the joint drug agreement or the collective bargaining agreements. As part of this latest filing, Horowitz's 33-page decision was unsealed. He had found that Rodriguez committed the most egregious violations of the drug agreement, including use of three banned substances and engaged in at least two attempts to cover up that behavior. Rodriguez has never tested positive for banned substances. Much of the league's evidence against him is contained in hundreds of incriminating BlackBerry messages between Rodriguez and Anthony Bosch, the man who claims he supplied and injected Rodriguez with performance-enhancing drugs. In an interview for 60 Minutes, Bosch told Scott Pelley how he delivered them to Rodriguez. Most of the times that we worked together was after hours. It was probably between midnight and 7 a.m. in the morning. What were you doing between midnight and 7 a.m.? Less people, less eyes. Less people, less eyes, you could go to his place? Absolutely. There, there was a lot of disguises that I, I had to disguise myself or I had to wear sunglasses at night or take an elevator, a freight elevator instead of the normal elevator. And it was challenging. All the legal experts we consulted said it would be unlikely that the judge would overturn the ruling, but not impossible. Charlie Nora. All right, Jim, thank you.